Hey guys, today a video about how I installed this electric car charger for a 2019 Chevy Bolt, although it'll work on just about every car out there. Stick around. Now my first word of advice is if you don't have a clue on working with electricity, go ahead and hire a proper electrician to do this. That being said, I'm gonna show you how I did it anyway. So we need to get power from our breaker box to the unit. Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take two wires. In this case, we need to use six or eight gauge wire depending on how long your run is. And basically we need to go to a 40 amp breaker in the box and then to the charging unit. Inside the charging unit, there's some lugs where these wires go to. And then also we have a lug for ground wire that will go back to a ground lug in the circuit breaker box. So that's essentially all we're doing. It's pretty straightforward and simple. So one of the first things I did is I stretched out the cable to make sure that it's gonna reach where the car needs to be plugged in. One of the first things I wanna do is find out where I wanna mount this charger. And for me, I'm pretty fortunate. I'm gonna be able to keep it relatively close to my main panel box here. And we'll put it somewhere over here. I made a little mark here just to kind of denote four to eight inches from the ground. That would probably work good as a max height for our use anyway. So I'm thinking I want to put it over here somewhere. I've got a stud right down here, which would be ideal if I could tie into that. But I do want to keep it outside of here. So another reason I put this piece of tape here was to make sure I keep it further away than this tape. So I'm going to go as far as that way as I can. So I've decided I think it's best to go ahead and mount it into the stud in the wall here. Push me a little bit further away from the box too, so I think that's good. So I'm going to put it somewhere around here. Now in my case, I know where the stud is. It's right down here. If you don't know where the stud is, you can get a stud finder. You can do this. You're going to hear the difference. Hollow. You're there. So I'm going to kind of line this up <clears throat> and just kind of make a mark. mark okay and then I'm going to pre-drill for the lag that's going to mount this so that's going to be for the first lag I should, if I just go like this and start this a little bit here looking good and mark my next hole go ahead and put a mark okay get this out of the way and there we go now I've just got to use a 716 socket head and tighten those bad boys down. Slide it in there. Just check to see the fit. There we go. What I want to do first before I get involved in the electrical stuff is open this up and take a look at the connections. But basically we're going to have to get some heavy gauge wire into this and then back to a breaker that goes in our panel. So I'm just going to pop this open. Okay, that pops open. This. Okay, take this off now. This is going to allow us to get into the connection point. The connection themselves are pretty straightforward. So now we can take this off now. Basically what we're going to have to do is do something like this. We're going to take these three wires they're going to connect in. So right here is our connection, our line input. So we're going to put a hot wire here, hot wire here, and a ground wire here. And that's the install. I'm going to put a, a junction box right down here, similar to this one. And then I'm going to run my wires to that, then out some flex -width conduit up up to the new device. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to get into here and make sure that I get a clear path to get down there. So I'm going to go ahead and have to take this off. And the most important thing when you're working with electric stuff is kill the main power to a panel. Again, this is something that's best left for a practicing electrician to do. Um, be very wary once this panel's off. I would kill all power first. Different panels have different setups. Sometimes there's a main switch here, but this actually doesn't kill all the power. It will kill the power to these poles here, but there'll still be some lug nuts up here that will be hot. So you, it's better to kill it at the meter if you can or somewhere else. It just depends how your setup is, is where you can kill the power. So I've already killed it and I'm going to go ahead and take this off now. So what I was saying before, even if you kill this main switch here, it will kill the power in these bus bars back here. 
However, these lugs and anything on this side will still be hot. So you want to kill it outside. So I know I've got space for a 40 amp 220 breaker here and it's too busy up top to go out of but I can see down here it looks like I have some space. I gotta be careful because I do have something coming out of this side and then another wire going down there. I'm gonna put my new box right around here. So what I'm gonna do to get the power out of the box, out of the wall and to some flex conduit is I'm going to go ahead and install one of these uh, old work junction boxes and basically what I'm going to do is I'm not going to make an outlet like this I'm going to basically feed the wires through here through some conduit and then back up so this is just going to serve as a pathway but I want to have something flush um, and I think this will work well this may not be traditional but it will work for this instance so to do this I got to cut a hole okay so something like that should be good just going to Trace. All right, and so that's what we're going to carefully cut out with a razor. All right, so next I need a way from the wire to get out of the box into the box, and there's these little punch outs here. I'm going to go for this one here. Okay, there we go. All right, so the wire is going to come through here, but that's a rough edge. So what I'm going to do is use this through here to keep the wire from chafing and come up there. Here we go. There we go. Now I have a nice clean spot for our wires to go in and out of. All right, so ultimately the wires are going to go through this. I'm going to go ahead and poke these little tabs in so I can get the wires in here. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this blue box in the wall there. Then this is going to go on top of it. I'm going to have a 90 coming out of here to the flex conduit, right? But it's a little tricky to feed all the wire through. So what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and feed the wire through here first. Then I'm going to mount the box and kind of back feed the wire that way. That should go in there like so. So now another tricky part, I'm going to try to feed the wires through the box and then basically I'm going to feed them back up through a little hole. So, it's a little tricky, there it goes, and bam, so now we got all three wires. Okay, so now that I got the wires somewhat threaded through, I can go ahead and install this box. See, when you put your screwdriver on this, it pulls that flap up, and then that flap holds it against the wall. So these are pretty cool for that. Okay. Nice and snug. All right, so now we can do, let's pull all our slack out. And now with all the slack of the wire taken out, we've got plenty of wire to work with in the box. And i got plenty of wire to make it to the charger. So now I can go ahead and get this bad boy taken care of. And there we go. So now we have the wire that's going to go, this wire is going to go out to the charger. And then this wire it's going to go to the box now i want to put this back on the wall to kind of figure out my final wiring here and lift this open so now we need to take the rest of this wire it needs to go to here i'm going to probably say something like that so i'm going to cut my wire right here i'm going to go ahead and cut them so now i'm cutting this flex conduit to the length I need. So now basically I'm going to keep my wires through this. So far so good. Yes, 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 yes. There we go. Push that in nice and tight. And put this up. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm just stripping a little bit of the wire off here. This one. So now what we have to do 
is put the wires in the corresponding holes. And so the way this works is we put either a red or black here, a red or black here, and a green in the middle. So these outsides are the two hots. There's a little guide right here, and in the middle is the green wire for the ground. So, and then screw it down. Okay, so that's nice and snug. Once all three wires are in, again, the two outsides are the hot wires, and the middle is the ground. There's these little mounting lugs here, you just turn them. Nice and snug. This isn't necessarily a real strong connection, and we don't ever want this moving, and if it does, we don't want those to pull out. So for that, and for safety of this, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and tack this off to the wall. Here we go. And I went ahead, started with the straight one here, but then put an angle on it just to get away. There's a grounding bar behind here, and we need to be able to access that if need be. I'll probably put one more here as well. All right, so we're done in here with our connection, so I can go ahead and put this back on. So now we can close this. Screw this stuff back on with these screws. Since this is stuck on the wall, we don't want it to move, even though it's on that bracket, we're gonna peel it off. So what I'm gonna do is stick this screw right through here and then tack it off just so nobody comes in and tries to take this thing off the wall because it is hardwired. All right, now that I'm done with this side, I'm gonna go ahead and wind it up. I'm just gonna leave this like here for now. Then we're gonna do the rest of that. For the wiring here, this part you gotta be real careful. Again, you wanna make sure everything's off. Um, again, off the other panel. This is what should be left for an electrician, but I'm gonna show you how I do it anyway. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run my ground wire first. Basically this green wire, the ground wire is gonna go into a ground bus bar like this. Usually the ground and neutral have a shared bus bar. There's one on each side. This one's easier to get to, so I'm gonna go to that one. Nice to leave a little slack if you can. Guess what I'll do, in case you ever wanna move the breaker, you wanna leave some slack. I'll just loop this over like this. Then come up, and I figure I can cut it right about here. And then I need to strip an end off like this. And then I'm going to put it in one of these here. I think I can get to this one. And loosen it up. And slide it in. And then tighten it down real good like this. Nice and snug, okay? Kind of my last step with the wiring here is to wire in the breaker. So this is a 40 amp breaker. The red wire and the black wire are going to go into these two. It doesn't matter which way. First, Cut my wire to where it needs to be and come right about there. Okay, so now the wire's cut. I'm gonna strip about a half inch off. So now that my wire is stripped, I can go ahead, put it in the breaker. Like I said, it doesn't matter. These are both hot wires. So we put the red one in here and then crank down on the lug here. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the black wire in like this. And then crank it nice and tight. There we go. So in this case, I simply, now that the wires are attached, I'm going to go ahead, put it in, and now the breaker is in. All the panel work's done. Everything's still dead here. I can go ahead and put this back on, and we're good to go. But one thing I do need to do is I need to make space for the new breaker, so I need to pop these out. Okay. And now that I've got everything live again, I'm gonna go ahead and flip the breaker. Green light came on, so I think that means we're good to go. So now it's time for the test. So push this button, unwind my cord. I chose this unit for several reasons. One, it was simple but robust. It comes with a very thick, heavy duty uh, cable for the charging cord, and it's a relatively short cable, and I actually wanted that in my application. My figure is shorter the cable, less resistance, so I like that. The other thing is you can charge up to at a 30 amp rate, which is plenty fast for the Chevy Bolt, but at the same time, you can throttle that charge back. And my thought is, is it might be healthy for the battery in the long term 
to charge it at lower amperages if you can. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but anyway, you can throttle the charge level back on this. So I like that. I actually have this one set to 50%. So pretty stoked about having the new Chevy Bolt 2019, but we put our little girl's car seat in there. It takes up a lot of space in the back seat. So we just got a new car seat, a Dian uh, Diano 3R, looks lower profile, has good reviews. Gonna go ahead and switch out our existing car seat with that car seat and see how it fits in the bolt. The first charge, 